Seed cotton modules developed by cotton growers through Cotton Incorporated and the Texas Agricultural Experiment Station and introduced in 1972 are now used on more than half of the U.S. crop and usage is increasing steadily. Module storage increases the efficiency of harvesting equipment, allows producers to get their crop harvested before weathering lowers fiber and seed quality, and allows gins to handle more bales per season. In medium and high volume ginning communities, modules can replace trailers and offer advantages to both producers and ginners, often at lower costs. But to be efficient and to satisfactorily protect quality and yield, module systems must be operated and managed correctly. In the next few minutes, we will outline the procedures and techniques you will need to follow to properly build, protect, and move modules. Before you attempt to operate a builder, study the manual, locate the controls, and pay attention to safety precautions. When you work around module builders, wear tight-fitting clothing that will not get caught in moving parts and pull you in. Make sure all guards and safety devices are in place. And on power takeoff, PTO models, make sure the shaft guard is present and in good condition. Never work on a machine while it is running. Shut it down and take the key with you so no one else can start it until you're ready. Other safety procedures will be pointed out, but ultimately it is up to you to protect yourself and your coworkers. Selecting a storage site is the first and most important decision you will make in the field. Build modules on high ground where water will not stand along the base and away from creeks and drainage ditches which may flood your module in heavy rain. Avoid long grass that can hold moisture and cause module contamination. A closely mowed sod surface usually works well, but avoid mud or loose sand which may bog equipment down when moving the module. In a field location, cut and remove stalks. Remember, the mover will not pick up all the cotton if the module is built on bedded rows. To eliminate the danger of electrocution, locate the module away from power lines. Avoid setting modules close to heavily traveled roads or other sources of fire, vandalism, and contamination. Never smoke or weld around cotton. If a fire starts in the cotton, quickly move the machine away and then deal with the fire. For efficiency, locate modules so pickers or transporters can dump on both sides, allowing them to get back to the field quicker and making it easier to build uniform modules. Modules must be well packed to withstand moves without breaking apart and be shaped so water will not puddle on the tarp. With the builder on a good site, dump the first basket in one end, level the cotton by lowering the tramper and moving it the length of the builder. Make the second dump in the opposite end and use the tramper to level the cotton. To ensure uniform density and tight compaction, Keep the tramper working continuously between dumps. Keep people out of the machine and off the tramper bridge when it is operating. Tightly pack each end so the module will not slough off during loading and unloading. Make the last dump in the middle of the builder and spread the cotton toward each end. Leave the middle higher so water will drain off when the cover is in place. A well-shaped module should look like a giant loaf of bread. Newer pickers with metered unloading systems make it easier to top off a module. The picker moves alongside the builder, dropping a controlled amount of cotton where it is needed. Seed cotton transporters with metering systems improve picker and module builder efficiency, especially when satisfactory module sites are not available in the field. Experience will determine how many dumps are needed for a good module and keep the pickers organized and moving efficiently with minimum downtime. When you finish a module, move the tramper to the front, raise the builder, check to be sure no one else is behind the rear door, and then open it. Pull the module off in a straight line and move to the next site. Cover the module immediately. Fiber quality and yield loss will result from a poorly covered module or low quality cover. A cheap cover could become very expensive later on if it fails to protect your cotton. 
There are several factors to consider when choosing a cover. First, fabrics are gauged by their weight per square yard. Heavier fabrics are usually stronger. Second, tear strength depends on the material, the size of the yarn, and the threads per square inch. And third, you should consider covers with ultraviolet inhibitors and antioxidants to assure satisfactory life. Suppliers should indicate the hours of usage the cover can tolerate before the strength is reduced by 30%. Plastic coatings which keep the woven fabrics from leaking are recommended on both sides of the fabrics. Also check the seams and hems. Seams on plastic covers should be heat sealed or extrusion coated. Hems should have wide seams containing at least two rows of lock stitch thread with four or five stitches per inch. Covers should have a label which includes the manufacturer's name, address, telephone number, date manufactured, fabric construction, and cover size. It should also state life expectancy and storage and use instructions. For satisfactory life, store covers dry and clean away from light and high temperatures. Take measures to eliminate mice and rats which can damage the covers. Before use, even if new, take time to check the cover for pinholes. This is an important test. If you can see holes, don't put it on. You can get more information on covers from Are You Covered? available from the National Cotton Council. Although there are several methods for attaching covers, form-fitting tarps with side netting and drawstrings around the middle are preferred. Keep the strings tight to keep winds from blowing the cover off. Other attaching methods may work, but are more likely to contaminate the cotton with the tie-down material. Avoid using synthetic materials. They may mix with the cotton, get chewed up in the gin, and contaminate your bales, causing serious economic or market losses when they show up in finished textile products. Properly constructed and covered modules may be left in the field until the gin is ready for them or they may be moved to a module yard. Minimize your moves though, since each move tends to loosen the module and add to the cost. Seed cotton should be 12% moisture or lower to keep satisfactorily in modules. Do not leave wet cotton in a module or trailer more than a day or two. Gin wet cotton immediately. Check inside module temperatures daily for five to seven days after they are built. If the temperature rises 20 degrees higher than the first reading, gin the cotton immediately. Recheck after rains, snow, or windstorms. Remove precipitation from the module. Check to see if the cotton is wet. And check under the cover for condensation. If you find a problem, gin the cotton immediately. Guidelines for monitoring modules during storage are covered in Seed Cotton Module Storage and Handling, available from your Extension Service or Cotton Incorporated. To load a module on a truck or trailer, make sure the transporter is exactly in line with the module so the rig can back straight under the load. To load a truck, set the axle and transmission speed so that the bed chain speed is synchronized with ground speed. Then set the power divider lock Turn the PTO pump on and engage the bed chains. Raise the bed until the gauge wheels barely contact the soil surface immediately in front of the module. Slowly back under the module. When the weight forces the leading edge of the bed chains into the soil, lower the front of the bed slightly to pull the tip of the chains up. Continue to back under the module until it is on the front of the bed. Lower the bed and secure it firmly to the truck frame. Disengage the bed drive. Turn the PTO off. Do not operate the PTO during highway travel or at engine speeds above 1500 RPM. And use a low gear until you get out of the field. On public roads, your transporter is subject to state and federal regulations governing weights, size, lighting, and brakes. So check your laws. General highway truck safety principles apply, but there are other specific precautions to observe. Engage all safety stops when the bed is raised while stopped. Keep everyone clear of the bed chains when they're engaged. When you reach your unloading point, locate the back of the transporter so the rear is in the desired location. Set the axle speed and transmission gears. 
Turn the PTO pump on, engage the bed drive, and release the bed latches. Next, raise the bed slightly and move the load back so that it balances over the bed pivot shaft. Then raise the bed until the rear contacts the ground. Now you can drive straight forward slowly. When the module is fully unloaded, stop the vehicle, lower and lock the bed, and turn the PTO off. Select the appropriate transmission gears and you're ready to go for another load. Modules are very effective for storing and moving seed cotton. Operated efficiently and managed properly, module equipment will return your investment. Good module management begins with selecting a well-drained site, forming a module that will shed water and hold its shape, selecting a quality cover and checking it before each use to make sure your module is properly protected, and checking the modules for about a week, ensuring their inside temperature does not rise more than 20 degrees following the first reading and further inspecting after inclement weather for dryness. Gin the cotton immediately if a problem arises. Equipment to build and transport modules is expensive, but efficient if the operator's rules are followed and the equipment is maintained properly. The cotton module system can improve the profitability of producing and ginning cotton and help the U.S. cotton industry compete successfully with both synthetic fibers and foreign cotton.